continue. I'm here if you need me. Thank you so much, uh, Nelly. So, um, audio is breaking a little bit for some people. Um, but if you have uh, a slow connection, that is natural. So, uh, bear with me a little bit. I will not speak too fast because I don't talk too fast anyway. So, I wanted to start with you by looking at some of the blogs that I uh, maintain at the moment. And very briefly, I talk about each one of them. You may know some of them. Uh, and you may know, for example, TEFL Matters. Does anyone, has anyone read TEFL Matters at all? This is the, the blog that I think um, uh, of as my personal blog. This is my personal blog where I, I sign as Marisa Constantini. This is not my school blog or anything. I don't, I have nothing to do with Australia. I, I really swear to you, Tom. Um, and it's a blog where I write a lot about language teaching, language learning, um, TEFL methodology. I write about new technologies and how to integrate them into language teaching. So if, if I have any favorite blog of all my blogs, I would say this one is it. This is also TEFL Matters is also the very first blog that I ever created. Uh, and I created it sometime in late 2009, I think. Um, later on, I created this uh, second blog, uh, which is called uh, Teaching and Learning Foreign Languages, because we needed a, a blog for my school, for my colleagues, for the tutors on my, at, my, at my center to also blog. and. Um, this is where they can do that and where we can also post things um, that are related to school news. For example, today I posted an announcement of all the talks that I will be doing this weekend because it's a crazy weekend. I'm talking to you online today and then tomorrow I'm talking live at face to face at TESOL Greece and then I take a plane and I go up to Thessaloniki and I'm doing two talks there and Nick Peachy is coming so you know it's it's all that is uh, perhaps of interest to um, to our trainees and to people who follow us on Facebook. Um, another blog that you that is a newer acquisition and Shelley uh, won't know about is uh, my Cambridge Delta, uh, Celta blog. Uh, this was started uh, primarily so that I could uh, send some blog posts to my Celta trainees that would be useful for their course. It is James, um, and also to write some private blog posts that are not open to the public. They are password protected and only my trainees have access to them because I have recently been experimenting with um, uh, writing um, um, narrative notes, if you like, for my lessons, field notes that you write to your trainees, the description of what they do, comments and tips and stuff using Evernote, which is a fantastic tool. And I discovered that you could post directly from Evernote via email to a WordPress uh, blog platform. And so could my trainees, in fact. They don't actually even have to log in at all in order to post uh, a blog post. So we started this blog, but then it kind of started evolving, and some trainees started blogging a little bit. So we're hopefully Sivasina, as we say in Greek, slowly, slowly. <laughs> um, we're going to try and develop that a little bit more. Um, a similar, in a similar vein, I started the Delta Course blog, where I blog or reblog uh, things that are more suited for a higher level course, such as the Delta Course. Um, uh, and they can blog as well, um, private also posts with um, uh, their lesson notes, photographs while they're teaching and also video snippets which I can also embed on that blog. Uh, you may all be familiar, some of you, not all of you I'm sure, uh, may be familiar with ELT Chat which also has a blog and I'm one of the people that help maintain that blog and I blog quite a lot. 
uh, on ELT chat every week I have almost to write uh, a blog like either announcing the topics hi Hannah or um, copy and uh, repost great summaries like the ones that Hannah teacher writes um, and uh, and also create polls and uh, and things like that to to run uh, to maintain the smooth running uh, of ELT chat um, the hashtag conversation that we have every Wednesday uh, I this is a collaborative blog that I um, uh, I maintain with uh, Sean Wilden with James. Uh, uh, Taylor and now two more new um, Sue and Anne who's our new moderator uh, Hannah's posts are amazing yes yes she's really good she's lovely I also maintain a Greek blog uh, or a blog in Greek which is about foreign language teaching because I felt that I should blog in Greek <coughs> excuse me for coughing um, because it, I, I felt at some point I felt very odd not to be writing in my own language but a very very strange thing happened in Greek I tend to rant a lot which I don't do in other languages um, maybe it's you know I write m mostly things that are related to local issues uh, in ELT and education but it's a blog where well you know you'll find some um, I think um, I put up a, a light because it's kind of getting dark out there. Is this too bright? I don't have an overhead light. I hope it isn't. Thank you so much. Okay, I hope it's not too glary because it is kind of shining in my eyes. Um, then uh, a couple of other blogs that you may not know about. I mentioned in the Shelley session today Reblogatorium, which is a blog where I reblog stuff I like, and which I think I want to, to have my trainees notice. Um, I started a, a blog called Discourse Matters because my great ambition is to create an A to Z of discourse analysis, but in a fun way. Um, and that is kind of a project on ice. I've written four or five blog posts, but I'm waiting for more inspiration. I also started a photo blog uh, on Tumblr uh, where I share things like my Chinese photos and where I would be to a conference and I read blog uh, odds and ends. So lots of blogs. Is, am I spreading myself too thin? What do you think? There's different things that I do for different blogs. Discourse matters. Discourse matters, Tarveen. Yes, you think so. Um, you think it's good to blog on different things? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, but I tend to think of my uh, Tuffle Matters as my main blog, as I said before. So when I've got something really important, um, myself is talking back to me. Oh, great. I love it. <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay, well, um, so maybe it's time to look at why do I blog really, uh, what you think. So why do I blog? Why do you think I blog and why do I have so many blogs? I think I feel like I'm preaching to the converted. How many of you have blogs? I do. I do, Hannah. You do? Oh, Janet is a great blogger. Jane, not you. Janet, <laughs> I know. I've, read, I've seen it. And just started blogging, Michaela. Okay. Well, you're going to, I think you're going to write one for us soon, right? For ELT chat. Well, since there are some people that I could maybe twist your arm and talk you into blogging. I'm just going to go on one main blog for Sylvia, but you also post for WizIQ, I know. Another great blogger here. Um, what platform would I direct a new blogger to? Uh, as, as you saw, I use all three uh, platforms, uh, Melanie. Oh, Nelly. 
You do. <gasps> I'm in awe of you. Most good Lord. I think uh, in Dribs and Drabs, I blog in all, all sorts of other places like Nings and, and stuff, but not, not uh, as many as you. Okay. So some people think Tumblr, some Tumblr, some people think WordPress. I tend to think um, that the easiest one for beginners is Blogger. It doesn't have very many uh, templates, but it's very easy to figure out. Uh, it's free. Uh, you can straight away uh, start embedding videos. Um, it's got all these um, different uh, widgets and gadgets that you can put in. Uh, there are great tutorials online. You can look at YouTube for YouTube tutorials to um, to get um, uh, to get information on how to set up your blog. Uh, WordPress is a great blog, but unless you've got um, a paid platform, you can't embed videos very well. It doesn't take some of the uh, uh, embed codes. It doesn't take to embed codes very kindly. I have three WordPress uh, blogs. I also blog. My main blog is on AJ Blogs, which I love as a platform. I blog on Blogger as well. That's where my Greek blog is. I, I have other blogs that you know I haven't even mentioned, but I guess my favorite one still remains Edu Blogs. Um, and and for a beginner, I would I would suggest um, Blogger Blogspot. So some of the reasons why um, uh, I think uh, there is a free version to Edu Blogs, but it has the same problems as free WordPress. Yes, that's why I prefer a Blogger for beginners. I want to talk about the inspiration. I started blogging, as I said, sometime in late 2009, and I'm—I mean, it may look like I'm a prolific blogger, but a part. And I guess in some ways I am, because I've got to write so many blog posts for ELT chat or edit other people's blog posts. But on this, um, but on the personal kind of production assembly line, I don't uh, produce uh, so many blogs. You know, I know about people who blog every day or every week, and I'm in complete awe of them. But I wanted to uh, mention um, how I got kick-started into blogging. Um, in 2009, just about the right the time I met you, Janet, and I met, uh, I think I also met Shelley at that time, and I think we set up our blogs on Edgy Blogs at pretty much uh, the same time, didn't we, Shelley? I don't know if she's here now. Um, I was kick-started by a great blogger who is, uh, who is, whose blog is now more or less on ice. Um, can I answer that? Can I answer that later, Nelly? Yeah, because uh, get, I'm getting distracted here by answering other people's questions. Ah, okay. Um, so my inspiration was um, the nudge, the kick in the shins that was given to me uh, by a fellow blogger, uh, Karen Sylvester, who wrote a very, very popular blog at the time. I think it was the top blog, the most popular blog. Uh, Kalinago English, and uh, she's probably going back into blogging after she's just finished her masters in the UK, and and uh, has announced that she's going back. Kalinago English, okay, and she kind of kicked me in the shins and told me that uh, what I was thinking was rubbish. That I did have things to say because I, I was oh you know I don't know what to say. I don't know what to write. What should I write about? which is pretty much what new bloggers feel like. Um, so I was inspired by other bloggers. I, I was inspired by Shelley, uh, who started blogging at about the same time as me. And she wrote some great blog posts. I was inspired by people like Janet, who was already blogging, I think, when I started. And, and slowly, I got into the hang of things myself, um, without instruction, I might say. But I was inspired by some really, really great bloggers around at the time. 
Um, but what I wanted to share with you was the inspiration for my session today and for a blog post which you can find on my blog with the same title, Why Do I Blog? It's on my Tefo Matters blog. It's not something that I wrote for this session. I thought I, I think I wrote it a few uh, weeks back or even months back. Um, and, um, and this inspiration came from a talk um, uh, on... Um, uh, a TED talk, actually, um, uh, by Richardson John, uh, who talks about the eight secrets of success. And I'm going to share the link of his talk with you. And I'm going to ask you to watch for two minutes only, two or three minutes only. I want to ask you to go to minute 2.10, 2. No. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay. Don't start from the beginning, but start from uh, after about a minute in the talk. And watch for a couple of minutes just to see uh, where my inspiration came from. And then after a couple of minutes, please come back to the session and you can watch the rest of it later. Can I ask you to watch for just for a couple of minutes from uh, maybe one minute fifty seconds or six uh, fifty seconds or something one forty and just watch for a minute. I don't want to bring it in here because I tried it earlier and it wasn't showing very well. So I don't want to kind of mess about with uh, your I, band for you if you stuff. like. Uh, this is, can you do that for sure, a minute? Sure, of course. Uh, would you like me to do it? I can bring it up, no problem, and everybody can see it. Yeah, Hi, I'm Richard St. John, author of Eight to Be. Um, oh, great. Do you want me to do it? Okay, there we go. If you could just Hi, mute I'm your Richard mic, Saint that John, would be great. I'm author of Eight to Be Great. My story started about 10 years yeah, ago on a it. plane. And in the seat next to me was a teenage girl. She came from a really poor family, but she wanted to get somewhere in life. And she asked me a simple question. What really leads to success? And yet, even though I'd achieved some success, I couldn't tell her how I did it. I mean, how did a dunce like me, who barely passed high school, end up becoming a millionaire? So I get off the plane and go to a conference. And I'm standing in a room full of the rich and famous when it hit me. Why don't I ask them what helped them succeed and find out what really leads to success? Now here we are 10 years later, and I've interviewed over 500 very successful people, including many of the world's greats. The big job has been analyzing and sorting the millions of words I got in the interviews. But after all that work, I discovered the eight to be great. The eight traits that lead to great success. Love what you do. Work really hard. Focus on one thing, not everything. Keep pushing yourself. Come up with good ideas. Keep improving yourself and what you do. Serve others something of value. And persist, because there really is no overnight success. The first trait that makes people great is passion. When I asked Russell Crowe what led to his Academy Award for Best Actor, he said the bottom line is I love the actual job of acting. I have a great passion for it. Successful people do it for love, not money. When Bill Gates and Paul Allen started Microsoft, Bill says, Paul and I, we never thought we would make much money. We just loved writing software. And the cool thing is, if you do it for love, the money comes anyway. The second trait that makes people great is work. All successful people work really hard. Martha Stewart said to me, I'm a real hard worker. I work and work and work all the time. Media tycoon Rupert Murdoch said it's all hard work. Nothing comes easily, but I have a lot of fun. Did he say fun? Yes, successful people have fun working. That's why I say they're not workaholics. They're work of frolics. <laughs> The third trait that makes people great is focus. I'm going to stop the video now because I don't want to be very... Uh, and I'm going to put in um, uh, the, the link for you to watch later. It's a very short video. Um, it's a great talk and um, there, there is a sense, um, there is a very good point that Nelly mentions. She says it's all about money and it's true that the original uh, thing is about money but for me I got the ideas and I thought you know it resonated with me and I thought 
yeah, that's why I do it. That's that's why I blog, and I wanted to share these with you on my. Oh no, sorry. Sorry, I misunderstood it. But his success is also about money. So these are the the ideas that he's uh, sharing. Um, he talks about passion, work, focus, persisting, ideas, good, push, and serve. And um, these are the ideas and how I think about them. And I think about uh, why I, I think blogging is good for me. I, I do strive for excellence. It's my motto. It's in my mission statement. My school is dedicated to the pursuit of excellence in teaching, in education. I want to be a better educator. I want to be a better teacher. I want to be a better writer. I want to be an excellent teacher, educator and presenter and I'm not um, but I've got to do things to get me as close to my goal um, as I can uh, in this lifetime uh, and that's all I have so I have to keep uh, striving towards excellence in some ways and blogging helps me to that with that I love my job um, I would do it for free if I could support myself um, I have a passion for teaching, for training. Um, I really, you do, you do do it for free. I, I can't afford not to do it for free because I employ people. I have to pay them. Um, I, I have a school. I have to pay the rent. I have trainers. I have to pay their salaries. Um, I, I do, however, need to make money as well, uh, but I need to maintain my enthusiasm and my passion for teaching because if I'm only working for the money, it just doesn't satisfy me. I, I could have done other things with my life. I could have done other things professionally that would have made me a lot more money. And blogging fuels my passion for teaching, fuels my love for my job. Um, I feel that serving others, uh, supporting others in achieving their goals is one of my roles as an educator. And sharing my ideas is part of what I do as well. Um, so serving others is part of my own personal makeup, I think, but I also think it's one of the things we do as educators. I think um, our ultimate role is to make to serve others so that they can do what they want with their lives, with their language acquisition, so that they don't need us. But I also do want to give back to my community. I do feel so very lucky to be doing a job I love, and I want to give something back to a community that allows me to do my job, allows me to do what I best love to do, and actually pays me to do it. And I think I need to give them something back for free that they don't have to pay for. Um, I, I am not a natural hard worker, so I do need to push myself at times. I, um, and blogging makes me think and rethink ideas. It, it stretches me. It gets me out of my comfort zone. It's not, it's not like I sit down every week and I think, oh, I have this wonderful blog post that I want to share with the world. Uh, I don't write compositions at lunch and dinner. Um, it's not what I do. It's not what is natural for us to do. I'd rather watch TV and relax. So I have to push myself. But blogging rewards me by giving me back the feedback of my community. So it encourages me to push myself to focus because I do tend to spread myself a little bit too thin. I am a natural uh, multitasker and it doesn't work very well. I am a Gemini and I like to do all sorts of different things. So blogging focuses me on my goal, on my job, which is to to learn more about teaching, to learn more about learning, to do my job better. It also uh, makes me curate and learn, excuse me, and because curation is a natural accumulation of what could ultimately be a lot of rubbish, uh, it helps me exercise my critical thinking skills as well and to evaluate ideas and collect and share and share and save 
what is of value to me, what I really believe in. So it makes me, it keeps me more sharply focused. Being creative is, is what I think is important for our job. Every individual needs to uh, exercise their creativity and develop the creative thinking abilities. And teachers, more than anything, um, really, really need to be creative. We've got such a demanding job. We've got to be able to think on our feet. We've got to solve problems, come up with ideas, respond to learners, attend to many different learners. Um, you know, we need to exercise our divergent thinking abilities. And blogging makes me more creative. Ideas bring more ideas. Curation brings creation. It's not you, you just can't sit in front of a computer on your own and come up with all the wonderful ideas in the world. Um, to get ideas, you need to look at other people's ideas. To write, you need you know you need to get writing. Writing breeds writing, and ideas bring breed more ideas. I'm naturally lazy. I there's nothing. Up else I'd rather do than sit in front of the TV or watch films on the computer or, you know, do nothing, go out and have coffee with my friends. So blogging is a discipline that gets me to work and I do believe that results need, uh, good results need hard work. You, you know, I, I don't know, I haven't re discovered the secret of success that says you can do it without doing anything. There's people that have done it. I haven't discovered it yet. <coughs> Excuse me. And perseverance is important. Persisting is important. Persisting even when... There's nothing else you can do. Communicating your ideas. Trying it out. Um, maybe also even not doing so well. It's part of learning, you know. We we allow our learners to make mistakes. Uh, we need to persevere uh, ourselves. Um, so blogging does that for me. These are the eight points mentioned by Richard um, St. John. And I would also like to add a couple of things myself. Nothing that the current audience uh, the usual suspects are the, the converted uh, are going to be learning as new. Blogging helps me connect. It helped me form. It helped me develop and grow. It helps me maintain and connect to my personal learning network. Sure, I connect with them through Twitter and through 140 characters. Sure, I connect with them by sharing links on Facebook. But without blogging, I wouldn't be able to tell them my own ideas. Um, without blogging, I wouldn't be able to truly connect with who I really am as a teacher, as a thinker, as a teacher educator. So blogging helps me connect with my PLN at a deeper and more substantial level than sharing other people's links and sharing other people's thoughts. And I think also it helps me be a creator of thinking not just a consumer of other people's ideas. Um, being a consumer of other people's ideas um, is, is, is great and it's a first step in curating and creating your own voice as a blogger. But you really need to also start creating your own ideas and not just be a consumer but a producer of ideas. Um, Nelly uh, 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 Deutsch uh, uh, mentioned some reasons for blogging earlier. And of course, we also do it for our on online presence. We are professional people. We need to have a good name in our community. We need to maintain a, pr a professional presence online. And um, blogging is part of my professional portfolio. Uh, who I am and what I think and how I write and how I train people is very evident to people there. It begins conversations by blogging and generating comments on your blog, such as James's question. It gives evidence of what I can do and who I really am. And it builds relationships. I've met a, a host of wonderful people through blogging. Blogging, uh, people who came to my blog, commented on it. 
uh, commented a blog post I've written and I responded. We started conversations. The conversations were continued on Twitter, then on Facebook. Eventually, we met. Um, most of you here, I know you through Twitter and blogs, and uh, I think that's a wonderful uh, reason. So having said all these fantastic things about blogging, do you think it's easy to convince trainees to blog? Yes, yes or no? What do you think? Quick sip of coffee, so I stop coughing. Can you write what you think? Yes or no? Two no's. Yes. Yes. You don't think it would be? Okay. I think I need some uh, drink of water, but I can't rush out now. Maybe. Well, yeah. I I really want to ask the people who said yes to stay behind and and chat and not go away um, after I finish. Because my own experience has been uh, a little bit negative. It hasn't been easy. And I've talked to many different uh, colleagues, teacher trainers, because I'm in touch with a lot of them. And uh, there are people uh, such as uh, that, that have expressed themselves uh, positively. Um, but most uh, colleagues uh, have said, no, it, it's not easy. Uh, and uh, what I want to explore with you is, is some of the reasons why. And uh, my first thought as a teacher educator is in why not. Um, yes, that would be lovely. Uh, that would be lovely. And thank you very much. Should I stop now? Is it the end of my talk? All right. I thought I had a little bit more time. My first uh, worry always is, is it their fault or is it mine? And uh, what I always end up saying is, you know, it's my, it's my fault. It's my fault. I'm to blame. It's their fault, you think. But I think uh, I always, as a teacher, I always think it's my fault. Uh, and and it's, I think maybe that's something I need to get, get out of. It's not a question of blaming people. It's a question of trying to find why it happens, who, who, what started, and how we could solve the problem. And I've asked several trainees to talk to me about it. And as I said, some, uh, I'm in the middle of doing some survey. And these are some of the reasons trainee teachers give. Um, whether they're uh, doing a part-time course or a full-time course, the coursework uh, load, if it's intensive, they can really not think of anything else. It's just too much. If it's a part-time course, they also have to juggle jobs and family. And again, blogging becomes a little bit of an extra thing. There's another fear, exposing their lack of knowledge and what they feel is lack of knowledge. And I can really sympathize with that because um, I, I felt like that as a beginning blogger. I'm, I'm a little bit more confident now. I'm not, but I'm not always sure that what I say is going to be of value. Um, some people have writing issues. They're not really confident writers. Writing is not doesn't come naturally to them, um, or they're afraid that if they blog, they might make mistakes and people might laugh and say, "Oh God, is that a teacher of English and that?" Uh, some people are actually unconvinced of the value of blogging. They think, uh, well, you know, they're consumers and they don't think they should be producing anything. And some people are just downright complacent. They come to follow a CELTA or a DELTA course. They want a piece of paper. Um, they think that's it. You know, that's the end of their development. They, they don't consider uh, themselves as potentially capable of doing anything else, nor would they want to. But the last, uh, perhaps, is also quite a, an important uh, issue. Um, a lot of them lack the technical knowledge. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, you really knowing how to get into a blogging platform, which blogging platform, as you said, to choose is very important. Um, 
uh, later when they finish uh, their course, they begin thinking, oh, I don't know what to write about, I don't have any ideas, oh, I don't know how to create a blog, oh, I'm looking for a job now, I'm too busy going through Tavel.com, I can't, I can't even think of starting a blog, you know, and things like that. So it's all boo, buzz, 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 buzz. You know, I want, I want to, I want to find a job. It's very important, and it is very important to find a job. So that's. <laughs> but I think also we need to think about what we do as trainers, and what I say as trainers uh, also applies to teachers of students. If you want to get your students blogging. You know, I'm talking from a different standpoint, but the, the equivalence uh, of the role should be apparent to anyone who's involved in teaching. Um, do we do enough about blogging? Do we teach our trainees how to blog? Do we encourage it in the training classroom? Is it a compulsory part of what they do? Is it part of their coursework? Do we show them how to use their blogging platform? In a research that I did three or four years ago, I asked uh, uh, hundreds of uh, CELTA tutors what they thought about um, using technology in the classroom with their CELTA trainees. And disappointingly, and quite um, at the disheartening answer that I got from them is that they don't. Uh, they don't think it's their role to teach the trainees to blog, to use wikis, to do anything that has to do with technology. They've got to teach them the PPP or the TBL. And I think, um, yeah, uh, Tom, it shouldn't be compulsory, but there are ways of uh, integrating it, I think, into your coursework um, that, that, that make it look less. You know, there are things that they have to do as a compulsory part of their course anyway. So blogging as a compulsory activity extra to the, their coursework seems to be a problem. I think if we could think of ways of integrating blogging and make it part of their coursework, for example, people have to write the reflections after a lesson, so why not post them in a private blog? Uh, people have to evaluate activities, so why not ask them to write their evaluation of an activity or a lesson or their peer evaluation on a short blog post? that they can post on their blog. So, yes, thank you very, very much, Abhi um, Um this, this is my next slide. You must have been reading my mind. Touch the screen. <laughs> Do we scaffold enough? Yes. Do we scaffold enough? Do we support the act of blogging enough on training courses? And scaffold, as you know, uh, support the learning um, to, uh, to to help. Uh, you know, this is a very very quick definition of what scaffolding means for those of you who, who don't know the concept uh, of what scaffolding is. So, as scaffolders, we're not builders, but we we don't build buildings, but we build the skills that the students, our trainees will need to create their own building. We just put up the infrastructure. And so if you want to create bloggers, you really have to give them some support, some scaffolding. You can't just let them go on their own. We need to motivate students and trainees to blog uh, and to focus on writing as a process. We do that. We do that with our learners. We say writing. OK, we'll have pre-writing. I'll teach you the mechanics of writing how to introduce it, la, la, la. Why don't we do it with trainees as well? We need to take them through the paces. We need to plan a series of lessons. And I found this great slide uh, produced by languages, languages.org. Uh, it's, an, it's on another blog, which is where a lot of my ideas come from. And what you see is a kind of mini syllabus of what, what, how you could structure a sequence of lessons on blogging, uh, the concept of blogging, um, examples of student blogs, creating an online identity. Um, you could pr progress from forums to blogs. Um, this is just a suggestion, Tom. It's not, it's not the be all of what people can do. Uh, I think uh, all I'm doing is throwing ideas about in the air 
to take people through to the actual thing about blogging itself. You can take them through different steps. Some ideas that work may be things like giving them models, uh, sending them to blogs to read, getting them to add, uh, yes, uh, add comments. Um, reading and responding to uh, text, for example, sending them to read a collection of articles and responding, writing a reflection or writing a summary, sending them to watch a lesson on video or live, um, an activity that you ask them to describe. You can give them a question or a series of questions or some other verb cues of prompts. And, um, a fun idea that I learned from a colleague who's a great blogger, uh, Doug Peterson, Peterson from uh, Ontario, uh, Canada. Uh, some of you may know him. He's a great blogger. And he found this HubSpot's uh, blog topic generator. He says, you know, i got to write a blog post every day. So I found this great blog generator, and I put three words, and um, and it gives me blog topics for a week. Try it. Um, you can find it on the slide or in the feed. Um, I put in the words teaching, listening, comprehension, and problems. And it gave me a week of blog topics, some of which are very relevant. But also, there are a couple of ideas that I could be writing about, yes. Um, the idea of chain posts, like tagged, we have so many uh, tagged posts. Uh, uh, recently, in the blogosphere, uh, I was tagged, I tagged other people, they wrote all these different... It's, a, it's an easy post to begin from, and all challenges, like we do on ELT Chat, you know, uh, a blog post challenges, you know, write a blog post about a great way of uh, bookmarking, but with trainees, perhaps, and students, start small. Uh, show them how some great blogs, and show them some uh, information about how to use an RSS reader, how to use maybe something like Feedly, or some other um, aggregator. You are getting carried away there with the concept of trainee, trainer, mooring, and cows. And I would like to call you back into being a little bit less unruly. I'm joking. I don't mind. Um, so show them how to use RSS readers. Uh, show them how to uh, follow some great blogs and teach them. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't. I meant to. I didn't mean to uh, offend you in any way. Um, uh, teaching students how to curate. Teaching them to be curators. Um, uh, I um, I have here. Um, I don't know if you know of um, Mentor Mob, which uh, turned into Lesson Paths, or Scoop It, or Digo, or Delicious. If you click on the link on my slide here, I've put everything in a loop. And uh, if you go into the loop, you will find all the other curation uh, tools and Learnist, and all sorts of other tools that you can find. Um, and also teach them how to follow other curators. Like Shelly, for example, is a great pearl treer. Um, or she, she does fantastic live binders. And uh, this one is uh, some, somebody that I just discovered today. I was collecting some stuff about blogging for trainees. And I found her pearl trees on trainees. So, you know, show them how to follow people. And, and here's a little bit of evidence uh, about a small success. Um, uh, this is the first tag blog by one of our trainees, Michelle, who, um, who wrote, this on, wrote this on our Cambridge Seltzer blog. And then after that, she was so thrilled with the results of it she put it in the blog, she gave it to me for, she sent it to me for reviewing to check that it was okay, and then I approved it, I put a couple of pictures, and she became so thrilled with her creation that immediately she went off and started her own blog. So supporting trainees is really important. And I think that's about all I, I need, I had to say 
about my blogging adventures with Chinese. And I would really love to hear your ideas about um, what you do to encourage Chinese. Um, and if anybody, I don't know, Nelly, is it possible for people to have a voice? Uh, we have another yes, three course. minutes or it's so. Got, yeah, we've got a few minutes. It's encouraged. It would be great to have some people. Please don't take what I write in the chat um, personal or anything like that. I think the chat is a great way to learn. I use it. You know, it's like blogging or Twitter, whatever. You know, it doesn't leave the chat box, and I'm not recording it, so no big deal. But I'd like to thank you um, because you got us inspired, um, and I think that's what the chat's about. It's about um, being inspired. For those of you that want to continue, Tom has added the link. Uh, Marisa, we hope that you'll have a chance. If not over the weekend, then on Monday, okay? Because it's going uh, to stay. So would anybody like the mic so that we can hear what you have to say? Um, as Marissa said, it's really wonderful to get a chance to hear you. So... Um, <laughs> Thank you, thank you for the for the kind uh, feedback. Um, if if you don't have any bright ideas now, but I think you know there were some people that said they they could get their students blogging. These are really ideas that I would like to uh, uh, learn from you. So there's a, a feed in um, on WizIQ on the course feed. So I'm going to pose a question there. Oh, great. And I hope uh, that you will find the time at some point to visit the feed and maybe to add your suggestion or an idea of how you got the students, your own trainees or students blogging. So uh, thank you very much for turning up to my talk. I'm really thrilled. And uh, Nelly, I'm sorry if I made you feel upset. I just said you. I, I just mentioned that uh, it's not. It's it's just responding instant. You know, intuitively to whatever is said. I mean, the chat box. I don't know if you've experienced the chat box in the '90s, you know, or 20 years ago. So, but the chat box is a place where you can kind of show your face. You don't have to hide anything. You don't have to be pretend anything. You could just, uh, you know, put a smiley or. Uh -huh. So, you know, I think that it's really important uh, to be open, and uh, and that's where you were. I mean, you said what you thought, and I said what I thought, so. Um, that's very, very true. That's, uh, shall I extend the session by five minutes? No, or, because or we're close. going. We're going to the next one. Uh, we've got a guest speaker at the next session uh, because Tara won't be able to make it, so I think you're going to enjoy it. So if you've got time, if you're feeling well, get a glass of water and uh, join us. I will. Thank you very much. Uh, thank goodbye, you. everyone. Thank, and thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming. See you later. Bye. Bye.